it's the Reading Bug again. Today's episode of Reading Bug Adventures is sponsored by Penguin Random House Audio and by Scholastic and the False Prince series by Jennifer Nielsen. Please support our sponsors at thereadingbug.com, libro.fm, slash thereadingbug, or at your local independent bookstore. Reader, welcome back to Reading Bug Adventures. This week, it's a bonus full story episode of our gorilla adventure, a trip to the Volcanoes National Park in Rwanda to visit the mountain gorillas that live there. Thanks for listening. Reading Bug Adventures is written, performed, and produced by the team at The Reading Bug, our family-owned independent bookstore. Things may sound a little bit different in this episode because, like many of you, we're adjusting to some changes all around us. We're staying home to help keep ourselves and our friends healthy. So we're recording episodes from inside our house, rather than from a recording studio. I want to thank Zencaster for their generous unlimited recording time offer, and Resonate Recordings, who as always does incredible work mixing and mastering each episode of Reading Bug Adventures for helping us sound our very best. Like some of your schools, our bookstore is also closed right now. But we've made a lot of adjustments to make sure we can continue shipping special orders and care packages ordered through our website at thereadingbug.com. And we're also still shipping our Reading Bug Box subscription boxes. Books and more, perfectly personalized to the unique age, interest, and reading level of the recipient. Visit readingbugbox.com. Thank you to our sponsors and to all of you for helping us continue to write new songs and making our podcast, even in these uncertain times. A big thank you and hello to our newest patrons. You're part of what makes Reading Bug Adventures podcast possible. To become a patron and support our work, visit patreon.com slash reading bug adventures okay reader are you ready to go on another exciting adventure with me and the reading bug then what are we waiting for let's fly it's time for a reading bug adventure it's a reading bug adventure there's lots of fun in store just inside our book bag there's new places to explore grab your crayons and paper and your imaginations too to share our trip with you. Reader, welcome back. It's so good to see you today. And hello, Lauren. It's great to see you too. I've really been looking forward to today's adventure. Are you ready to go? (laughs) Whoa, slow down, Reading Bug. We just got here. Of course we're excited. It's always so much fun to adventure together, but let's find out where we're going and get ourselves prepared for whatever excitement awaits us first, don't you think? I think that would be very sensible. S-E-N-S-I-B-L-E. Sensible. (laughs) Spelling Bee, hi, I didn't see you there. (laughs) Are you joining us for this adventure too? Yes, I am, and I'm really excited about this trip because we'll be going someplace that I had never visited before. Someplace warm, exotic, and full of incredible wild animals for us to see. Oh, that does sound exciting. But it could describe any number of places, couldn't it, Reader? Could you give us some more hints? Of course I can, Lauren. Bee may be excited because she's never visited this place before. But I'm excited because we're going back somewhere we have visited. And it is one of my favorite places. Somewhere we visited before. Hmm. Reading Bug, we've been to so many places on our adventures together. We've visited the top and the bottom of the Earth, Antarctica, and Alaska. We've visited Japan, Scotland, and Ireland. We've seen the Wild West and the ocean floor. Why, we've even been all the way to the moon when we helped Lumi find his way back home. Reader, where do you think the Reading Bug is taking us back to? I think we're going to need another hint to figure out exactly where we're going today. Sure thing, Lauren. Today, we are going to visit the second largest continent in the world. Any guesses? The second largest continent. Right. A continent is any one of the Earth's large continuous land masses. Each contains several countries. For example, North America, where you and I live, Lauren, is the continent where Canada, Mexico, and the United States are located. Yes! North America is one of seven continents on Earth. Reader, Do you know any of the other continents? There's North America, South America, Asia, Europe, Africa, Australia, and Antarctica. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. 
I'm not sure which continent is the second largest one, though. I don't even know which is the largest. They all seem awfully big to me. Reading Bug, we're going to need another clue. Okie dokie, here you go. We have already visited this continent three times. Three times? Really? Hmm. Well, then it must be North America. We visited the Wild West, Plymouth, Massachusetts, and New York. Or is it Europe? We visited Scotland, Ireland, and Camelot. Does Camelot count? Very good guesses. But you haven't got it yet. Maybe you can figure it out if I tell you the names of some of the books I brought with me in my book bag today. Let's see. I've got Why Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ears by Verna Andema, Rainforest Animals by Joe McDonald, and Bringing Back the Mountain Gorillas by Ruth Daly. Oh, I've got it. Do you read her? Why Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ears is an African folktale. And Rainforest Animals is about the animals that live in the rainforests like those found in Africa. And Bringing Back the Mountain Gorillas is about mountain gorillas and they only live in Africa. We must be going back to Africa today. Yes, yes, yes! One of my very favorite places to adventure because of all the amazing plants and animals there. But wait, Reading Bug, you said we'd been there three times before, but I only count two. Once to see and rescue chimpanzees, and the other on an African picture safari where we met Wally the Wildebeest and many other amazing animals. When was the third time we visited Africa? Well, Lauren, some people think that Africa is just one country. But here's a book titled Africa is Not a Country by Mark Manicor. It reminds us that Africa is a continent comprised of many different countries. Our most recent trip back to the continent of Africa was when we traveled back in time to visit ancient Egypt, a country that's located in northeastern Africa. We could visit different places in Africa many more times and still have new and exciting experiences every time. On this adventure, we'll be visiting Rwanda and the mountain gorillas that make their homes there. I, for one, am ecstatic about going to Africa and seeing all the mighty gorillas. E-C-S-T-A-T-I-C. I've never been before. I'm ecstatic, too. Reading Bug, did you know that one of my very favorite books is The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate? It's the story of a gorilla who lived all alone in a small cage in a shopping mall for many years. His best friends were a little girl named Julia and a small dog named Bob. I did know that was one of your favorites, Lauren. And it's one of mine, too. The One and Only Ivan is a fictional story about a gorilla. F-I-C-T-I-O-N-A-L. Fictional. That means that One and Only Ivan is a made-up story, right? That's right, B. It's not true, but it was inspired by the true story of a gorilla named Ivan. Really? It's inspired by a true story? How did a gorilla end up in a shopping mall? I read the true story of Ivan in a non-fiction book by Catherine Applegate. Ivan, the remarkable true story of the shopping mall gorilla. In it, she explains that Ivan was born in a tropical forest in the Democratic Republic of Congo. That's one of the many African countries. He was part of a large family of western lowland gorillas. But poachers stole him and another baby gorilla when Ivan was only six months old. Put them in a crate and shipped them all the way from their home in Africa to North America. Tacoma, Washington in the United States to be exact to a man who owned a shopping mall. A poacher stole them? What's a poacher? Oh, I know that. P-O-A-C-H-E-R. A poacher is someone who illegally hunts or captures wild animals. That's right, B. Ivan was all alone and really far from his home and family. But the owner of a pet store in the shopping mall offered to raise him, and Ivan grew up as part of the family, like a human child, until he was three years old. By then... Ivan had grown too large and too strong to live in the home of a human family. Gorillas are really gentle creatures, but because they're so big and strong, they can easily hurt a human, especially a child, without even meaning to. So when Ivan was three, the pet store owner gave him back to the shopping mall owner, who put him in a cage that was only 14 feet wide and 14 feet long. 14 feet isn't very big. That's only the size of two cars parked next to each other. You're right. And it is much too small for a mighty gorilla. But poor Ivan lived all alone in that small cage for 25 years. Then, in 1992, when Ivan was 28 years old, National Geographic filmed a documentary about him called The Urban Gorilla, 
and his story became widely known. Many people started working to provide Ivan with a better life, and finally, in 1994, Ivan was moved to Zoo Atlanta in Georgia, which housed the world's largest population of gorillas in a natural habitat zoo setting. And he was able to live the rest of his life with the other gorillas there at the zoo. Zoo Atlanta does great work providing natural habitats to its animals and is involved in conservancy all around the world. Well, at least Ivan's story has a happy ending. But how sad that he was taken away from his family and from the open rainforest of Africa to live in a cage all those years. You know, it's a really, really long trip to go all the way to Africa to see gorillas. And I remember that it can be pretty scary hiking through the forest, surrounded by all those wild animals. Do you think maybe we should just go to Zoo Atlanta instead? It would be a lot safer way to visit gorillas, wouldn't it, Reader? Lauren, I'd love to go to Zoo Atlanta. Some other day. But today, we're heading out on an adventure. We'll be visiting Volcanoes National Park in Rwanda together. Volcanoes National Park is one of the only places in the world where mountain gorillas live, and there are only about 1,000 mountain gorillas left in the whole world, which means they are extremely endangered. They only live high up in the Virunga Mountains of Uganda, the Republic of Congo and Rwanda, and in the Bwindi Impenetrable Forest in western Uganda. I know a bit about endangered species, because some of my best friends, the honeybees, could become endangered as well. E-N-D-A-N-G-E-R-E-D. An endangered species is a species of animal or plant that is in danger of becoming extinct, which occurs when there are no more animals or plants of the species alive anywhere in the world. That's right, Spelling Bee. Reading Bug, you said that mountain gorillas only live in Africa, but you also just told us that Ivan lived in the United States and that there was a whole group of gorillas living at Zoo Atlanta. Ivan was a lowland gorilla, Lauren. Lowland gorillas live in captivity in the United States and other countries outside of Africa. I read in Gorillas Up Close by Christina Nippert Eng that there are about 350 lowland gorillas living in North American zoos, but there are no mountain gorillas anywhere in the world except for Africa. Lowland gorillas are pretty rare too, but there are a lot more lowland gorillas than mountain gorillas. There are nearly 100,000 lowland gorillas, about 100 times the number of mountain gorillas. That's still not very many. You're right, Lauren. But many organizations are doing important work in Africa and around the globe to protect these beautiful animals. And their numbers have been slowly growing in recent years. Bug, what are the differences between lowland gorillas and mountain gorillas? Great question, Bee. I've been reading a lot about gorillas. And in Africa, lowland gorillas live in the thick rainforest on the west coast while mountain gorillas are found at much higher altitudes and much farther inland in a small pocket of wilderness in Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mountain gorillas live high up on the rocky slopes of volcanoes. Mountain gorillas also have a larger nose and mouth and larger teeth than lowland gorillas. And they are larger too. A male mountain gorilla can be 6 feet tall and weigh almost 500 pounds. But a lowland gorilla generally weighs less than 400 pounds. Mountain gorillas are really remarkable. Okay, okay, you've convinced me. Our adventure may be more dangerous if we visit gorillas in the wild in Africa rather than the zoo. But this will be a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience, won't it, reader? And maybe we can help with the conservation efforts while we're there. Or at least bring back stories and information to our friends and family that will help these endangered gorillas. Great idea, Lauren. Reader, did you remember to bring your crayons and paper with you? There aren't a lot of mountain gorillas left on Earth. So, it'll be really special to see them, and you want to draw pictures when you do. Just like the illustrations in our favorite books, pictures are how we'll remember our adventure today and share it with our friends and family. Once you're back from this adventure, you can tell your own stories about the endangered mountain gorillas to your friends and family using the pictures you draw today. Telling their story is part of what will help keep the gorillas protected. I'll play some coloring music at the end of our adventure for you to color to, but you can color anything you want at any time. And if you ever need more time, just pause our adventure. Great! Now then, what are we waiting for? Let's get ourselves to the continent of Africa for another amazing adventure together. But before we do, how about a little stretch? On our previous visits to Africa, we've done a lot of walking and faced a lot of dangers. We need to stretch out our bodies and get ready for whatever adventures await us. Let's stretch out together. Everybody stand up, unless you're buckled into your car or tucked into your bed and wiggle your fingers and toes. Are you wiggling? Great! 
Now, stretch your arms up high over your head. Perfect. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side, let's get ready to go. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side, now we're ready to go. Great work, everyone! Yeah, I feel magnificent! M-A-G-N-I-F-I-C-E-N-T. Magnificent! Thanks. Me too. But now we've really got to go. If we hope to get to Africa, find the gorillas, and get back home all in one day, we don't have a second to lose. Let's go, 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 gorilla! Magic Book Bag, please take our group to visit a mountain gorilla troop. We'll see the primates in Volcanoes Park and travel back safely before it gets dark. Look, reader, it's working! The Reading Bug's magic book bag is opening up bigger and bigger. Big enough to fit us all inside. And there's pictures, words, and music swirling all around in there. From all the books about gorillas that the Reading Bug has been reading. Are you seeing what I'm seeing, reader? That's right! There are bamboo forests that stretch up, up, up the hills to meet the green trees and vines of the rainforest. Over there I see several massive gorillas with silver fur on their backs. And I see mama gorillas with tiny babies riding on their broad backs. I also see monkeys with beautiful golden fur. There are also elephants, water buffaloes, and antelopes. Remember those animals from our picture safari reader? There are lots of new words in this book bag too. Silverback, blackback, barunga, azizi, hominid. How fun! Okay, is everybody ready to go? Great! Hop three times with me, then into the book bag all together. We do not want to be late. Ready? One hop, two hops, three hops, and we're in! Let's jump inside our book bag. What will we find there? Imaginations run away. What's in our book bag? Our trusty book bag. What will we learn about today? Oh boy, here we go! Raider, the book bag is taking us high into the air and over a giant body of water. That must be the Pacific Ocean. Africa is a really long way from home, but with the Reading Bug's book bag, we should be there in no time. Look, there's a huge landmass in the distance. That must be the continent of Africa. I see forests and golden meadows, and I see a very large river. Hey! That must be the Nile River we crossed on our Egypt adventure. And up ahead, I see some very large mountains. They're so tall that it looks like they're actually as high as the clouds hovering around them, giving them a magical, almost ghostly look. I read in Magic Treehouse Good Morning Gorillas by Mary Pope Osborne that the volcanic mountains in Africa are referred to as Barunga, which means a lonely mountain that reaches to the clouds. Barunga? I like that word. B-I-R-U-N-G-A, Virunga. That's right. And if those are the Virunga Mountains in Uganda, then we've just got a bit further to go before we're in Rwanda with the mountain gorillas. Looks like you were right, Reading Bug, because we've just landed. Only one thing left to do now. Crawl out and see if there's any gorillas nearby. Follow me. And remember that mountain gorillas can be really, really big. So everyone, be careful. Hey, where are we, Reading Bug? I don't see any gorillas here. Just a big brick building that looks like a house. Gorillas don't live in houses, do they? (laughs) No, they don't live in houses, Lauren. And anyway, I don't think this is a house. It's a brick building with an aluminum roof. And there's a fence around it with a sign on the fence that says, Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Project Regional Headquarters. See it? Oh, yeah. Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Project Regional Headquarters. What do you think that is? Well, I'd be happy to tell you about it if you've got a few minutes. Oh, you startled me. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to sneak up on you. 
My name is Dr. Mike Cranfield, but everyone calls me Dr. Mike. I'm the director of the Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Project, or the MGVP as we call it. We get lots of tourists visiting us here at MGVP, but none quite like you. (laughs) Yeah, we get that a lot. (laughs) It's really nice to meet you, Dr. Mike. My name is Lauren. These two bugs are the reading bug and spelling bee. And this here is our reader friend. Say hello to Dr. Mike, reader. We're here on an adventure. We've read all about the mountain gorillas, and we've come to visit them and hopefully draw a picture or two. Well, you're in the right place. Like I said, I'm the director of MGVP, and I'm also one of the veterinarians that helps take care of the mountain gorillas that live nearby. We aren't the ones who take the tourists to visit the gorilla families that have been habituated, however. Habituated? Dr. Mike, what does habituated mean? Habituated. H-A-B-I-T-U-A-T-E-D. Even though gorillas are peaceful animals and herbivores who don't eat other animals or people, gorillas who have not been habituated are afraid of people and they may charge and injure them if they get too close. Habituation is a process that naturalists use to get the gorilla used to being around people. That's right. You're a pretty smart little bug. To habituate gorillas, naturalists will follow them at a distance. Over time, they get closer and closer until the gorillas get used to having people close by them. Tourists can only visit habituated gorilla families. And in order to protect the gorillas, only eight people are allowed to visit each of the seven habituated gorilla families in the volcano's national park each day. Unfortunately, the hikes to the gorillas start at nine in the morning, and right now it's it's well past noon. So you and your friends are going to have to wait until tomorrow if you want to visit with a gorilla family. Wait until tomorrow? I'm afraid that's not really an option for us, Dr. Mike. But you look like you're about to take a hike. I see you're wearing hiking boots. You have a backpack on your back, and you've got several bottles of water stashed in your backpack pockets. Any chance you might be headed out to see some gorillas today? (laughs) You're very observant, Lauren. And you're right. I am heading out to see the gorillas. Each day, the guides that lead tourists on the hikes to the gorillas need to count the members of the family that they visit to make sure that they have seen all of the family. If any of the gorillas are missing, they search for it. And if they can't find the missing gorilla, they radio me at the MGVP to send a veterinarian up the hill to help with the search and to take care of the gorilla if it has been injured or is sick. This is one of the many ways we work together to help protect these incredible animals and their families. Unfortunately, I've just received a call from Patience, one of the guides. She is visiting the Umubano family, a small family of 13. Patience told us that they have only counted 12 gorillas. She can't find one of the young male blackbacks named Inyange. So I was getting ready to hike up the mountain to help look for the missing gorilla. Dr. Mike, we can help. We really want to see the gorillas today. And a few more eyes to help with your search will help you find Nyange faster. I'm sure of it. Can we join you, please? Hmm, I don't know. You're right that I could use your help on the search. It's almost noon, and although gorillas don't have any natural enemies, if Nyange is sick or injured, he may not be able to make it through the night if we can't find him before dark. On the other hand, the gorillas are a long, long way from here. Patience thinks it's about a four-hour hike, and I'm not sure you're all up for it, especially this late in the day. I have an idea, Dr. Mike. You need to get to the gorillas quickly so you have more daylight hours for your search. And we need to visit the gorillas today instead of waiting for a tour tomorrow morning. So why don't you hop into my magic book bag with all of us, and we can ask it to take us up the mountain in no time at all. Uh, a magic... what? I'm not sure I understand. Trust her, Dr. Mike. Using a bit of book bag magic, and our imaginations, of course, the reading bug can get us anywhere we want to go. What do you say? Okay. I guess it's a deal, then. If you can get me up the mountain without having to hike for four hours, I'd be foolish not to give it a try. But you're all my responsibility now. So you're going to need to listen to me carefully, do what I say, and stay alert for danger at all times. Can you do that? We sure can. Thanks, Dr. Mike. Well, then what are we waiting for? Show me how this magic bag works. With pleasure. Magic book bag, please help us spot a poor gorilla who may be sick or lost. Get us there quickly with Dr. Mike and help us avoid a really long hike. Well, would you look at that? Your little bag is growing bigger and bigger and bigger. Big enough to fit us all inside. 
Hurry up and jump inside with me on the count of three. One, two, three, jump! And we're in. Wow, this is amazing, look. We are zooming high above the bamboo forest below and up to the rainforest canopy at the top of the mountain where the gorillas like to sleep. During the day, gorillas might enter the bamboo forest to eat bamboo shoots, which accounts for about 70% of their diet. But they love to sleep in the rainforest and one of their favorite foods grows there as well, the stinging nettle. Oof, what was that? We just landed. I told you the book bag would get you up here lickety split. Follow me, everybody, out of the book bag. We've got a gorilla to find. <clears throat> Ahem, follow me, remember? You're all my responsibility now, and there could be any number of dangers out there. Let's all quietly climb out and see where we have landed. Dr. Mike, is that you? How did you get here so quickly? I didn't think I'll see you until late this afternoon. I only called you on the radio one half hour ago. Patience, hello. You won't believe how I got up here. Oh, and... Excuse me, these are my new friends. They're here to help me look for Nyange. Patience, meet Lauren, the reading bug, the spelling bee, and their reader friend. Welcome, friends. We can use all the help we can get to find Nyonge. It is not like him to be away from the family like this. I'm afraid he may be hurt. Bug, Lauren, reader, look, it's a family of gorillas. They're so beautiful. Where, Spelling Bee? Just over there, to our right. They're only about 30 feet away in the thick bushes. There are maybe 10 of them in total. See? Oh, yes, I do. Look, Reader. The big one in the middle is staring right at us. But he's not moving, even though there are three small gorillas climbing all over him as he watches us. Yes, and there are more gorillas here, too, see? That's the Umobano gorilla family, Lauren. Nyange's family. Wow! Look how beautiful that big gorilla is, Reader. He has thick black hair all over his body, except for his face, fingers, and feet. The skin of his dark black nose is flat, and his nostrils are wide, and his ears are black, too. They look a lot like human ears. So do his large fingers and toes. Lauren, reading bug, you're right. The only thing that you got wrong is that gorilla is not a he. It's a she. A she? But she's so big. She sure is. She's a fully grown female gorilla. And so are those two gorillas to her left. The females in the gorilla troop are called the harem. As you can see, when they're not eating, they're usually busy taking care of their babies. When they move, a mommy gorilla will carry her baby on her back, although the smallest babies often cling to their mother's neck. But when the gorillas are eating or resting like this family, the older babies and the juveniles usually play, sleep, or feed. The gorillas over there are even larger, see? Those are the males of this troop. I read that older male gorillas are called silverbacks because of the silver hair that grows on their backs. And the younger males, those without any silver hair, are called blackbacks. Is that right, Dr. Mike? Exactly right, reading bug. Most gorilla families have only one silverback, like this family. You can see those are all younger blackbacks. You know, you can call me a silver head because of all these silver hairs I'm growing up here. <laughs> uh, now, did you know that mountain gorillas are the largest primates in the world? Primate? P-R-I-M-A-T-E? Oh, I know that word. Primates is the animal group that contains all species that are related to lemurs, monkeys, and apes. It even includes humans, like you. Exactly right, Spelling Bee. The chimpanzees that we visited at the Gombe Stream Chimpanzee Reserve in Tanzania are also primates. The gorillas and chimpanzees both have a lot of features and even behaviors that look like humans. Their DNA, that's what makes you, you, and me, me, has a whole lot in common with human DNA. Well, would you look at us? Just a bunch of primates hanging out in the rainforest of Rwanda together. <laughs> ooh, 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 Can you swing like a monkey and jump from tree to tree? Whee! 
Do you love bananas just like a chimpanzee? Yummy. Can you beat on your chest like a mountain gorilla? Boom, 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 boom. Or hug all your friends like a little bonobo. Primates see and primates do. In lots of ways, they're just like me and you. Let's work together to protect their homes. Give them safe places to live and roam. Ooh, 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 ooh. Can you climb a tall tree like an orange orangutan? Stretch, pull, stretch, pull. Can you yell low and loud like a howler monkey can? Ooh. Do you jump up and down like a little macaque? Ooh, 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 ooh. If you can and you do, it's thanks to DNA. And primates do In lots of ways They're just like me and you Let's work together To protect their homes Give them safe places To live and roam That's a really fun song, Lauren. And look, I think the gorillas liked it too. But I think we should continue to be cautious and stay back here at a safe distance. Gorilla troops are very protective of their babies. With a more mature family, we might be able to get much closer, but I'd recommend keeping our distance here. The gorillas seem to have liked the song, but they're not doing very much. They're just sitting here, eating leaves, watching the baby gorillas and looking at us. Why aren't they moving more, Dr. Mike? Well, reading bug, gorillas don't have to work, do they? They don't go to school or to soccer practice either. They're also not predators, so they don't spend any time tracking or hunting their prey like a lion or a hyena might. A gorilla troop follows a pretty simple schedule, actually. They wake up, find a nice eating spot, and then settle down for a nice midday rest. After resting, they eat again. Plants like bamboo shoots, stinging nettles, flowers, or ferns. Then, as the sun begins to set, the silverback that is the head of the family chooses a spot for the group to spend the night. Each gorilla, except for youngsters who sleep with their mothers, builds a night nest, which is a circle of flattened and bent plants. The gorilla makes new night nests every evening. (laughs) Sounds like a pretty good and uncomplicated life to me. That's why it's even more concerning when a guide like Patience finds one of them missing. Dr. Mike, didn't you say this was a family of 13? I'm only counting 11 gorillas here. Where's the silverback? Yes, the Umubanu family is 13, so without Nyange, there should be 12 here. One, two, three, four. Lauren, I think you're right. Uh, Patience, it looks like Charlie is missing too. Where is he? Charlie? Charlie is a silverback that leads this family. It's definitely not like him to leave the family alone like this. Patience, have you seen Charlie? He was here when I arrived, Dr. Mike. But you're right. He is definitely not here now. Do you think he may have gone in search of Iyange as well? We really need to start searching if we are going to have any chances of finding them before sunset. Quickly, follow me. Reader, reading bug, spelling bee. Remember, we're here to find Iyange. And it looks like Charlie might be missing now, too. Let's do what Patience says and follow him through the rainforest. Are you ready? Great. Let's go. Lauren, reader, be very careful where you walk. Remember, there are lots of dangerous things around us. Even some of the plants can be dangerous. The plants? Oh, yes. The mountain gorillas have long hair that protects them from the stinging nettles in the rainforest. But as far as I can tell, Lauren and reader, you don't. (laughs) Oh, sorry, just a little gorilla humor there. But seriously, the gorillas love to eat a plant called a stinging nettle, which are abundant around here. They are delicious for gorillas, but humans need to watch out for them. Oh, look, 
That's a stinging nettle right there. See, the leaves are medium sized and heart shaped. And the oddest thing about them is that they are covered with little tiny hairs. See? Oh, yes. Look, reader. The leaves look hairy. Exactly. So keep on the lookout for plants that look like that one and avoid touching them. They're called stinging nettles for a reason. Thanks, Dr. Mike. We'll stay alert and follow right behind you. But it really is hard to look out for the nettles while I'm also watching for the slippery rocks and the slick mud on the ground. I sure do wish I was wearing hiking boots instead of tennis shoes. Just follow me and we'll all be fine. Okay, Dr. Mike. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, yikes! Oh no, Lauren, are you okay? Yes, yes, Reading Bug, I'm fine, thanks. I just lost my balance and I landed on my bottom, but I'm okay. No cuts or scratches, no broken bones or sprains. I usually treat gorillas, but I can take care of injured people, too. I'm just a little embarrassed, that's all. Thanks, Dr. Mike. Wait, no, hey! Ouch, ouch! Oh no! Reader, what's happening? My my legs feel like they're on fire. Ouch! 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 Someone help! It feels like hundreds and hundreds of bugs are crawling up my legs and biting me. Reader, do you see anything crawling up my legs? Ah! Look! My legs! They're stinging and they're turning red! Lauren, just keep calm and Reader, stay back. Lauren, I think you may have fallen on a stinging nettle plant. I know it doesn't feel good right now, but I promise it won't last very long. (laughs) Uh, I've had plenty of close nettle encounters out here. Hold still and uh, and one second. Here, here, take this. Uh, uh, A leaf? Dr. Mike, I don't need a leaf right now. I need help. Lauren, this leaf will help, I promise. This plant here is a dock plant. They often grow close to stinging nettles and look at their leaves. They are much bigger than the nettle leaves, a little lighter color of green, and they are oval shaped and very, very smooth. Lauren, take these leaves and rub them hard all over your legs. Do it right now, trust me. Rub leaves on my legs? Okay, Dr. Mike, I I guess you're the doctor. Is anything happening, Lauren? Oh, yes, something is happening. Something good. Look, the leaves got all squishy and wet and my legs, they've stopped hurting. Wow, was that magic? (laughs) Nope, not magic, just nature. Dock leaves release a moist sap that has a cooling effect on skin, just like an aloe you might rub on your skin for a bad sunburn. The stinging would have gone away in about 30 minutes, but the dock leaves help relieve the pain much faster. That's two rainforest lessons for you today. First, never touch a stinging nettle. And second, if you do, find a dock plant fast. Thanks, Dr. Mike. What a relief. Reader, I think now might be a good time to pause our adventure and take a bit of a rest, don't you? We've seen and done so much. But if we're going to find Charlie and Yange out here in the dense rainforest, we've got a lot more to do. I'm going to pause our adventure for a brief message about today's sponsor. Don't go anywhere. The Reading Bug and I will be right back in just one minute. Today's episode of Reading Bug Adventures is sponsored by Penguin Random House Audio and some of their great new audiobook titles. Reading Bug, why don't you tell everyone about the books you've been listening to? Reading Bug? Reading Bug? Oh, Lauren! Hi! Sorry, I didn't hear you. I have my headphones on. I'm listening to audiobooks from Penguin Random House Audio. Yes, Reading Bug, we know! Take your headphones off and tell everyone about them. Oh! (laughs) Sure, Lauren. Right now, I'm listening to a brand new audiobook called How to Solve a Problem. It's about Ashima Shireishi, one of the world's youngest rock climbers. And it's written and read by her, too. That sounds great. It is! Rock climbers call boulders a problem, and you solve it by climbing to the top. This story challenges little listeners to tackle problems in their own lives, to reach new heights and keep trying. I was just about to listen to Max and the Midnights by Lincoln Pierce. It has music and sound effects, just like our podcast, in addition to a full cast of voices, making Max's adventure to become a knight a great listen for the whole family. Oh yeah, it's wonderful. And so is Dragons vs. Unicorns by Kate Bieberdorf and read by Georgette Perna. You know how much I love science, don't you? Sure. Well. This book is about Kate the Chemist. 
She helps solve problems around her neighborhood using science. It even has step-by-step -step instructions on how to do the science experiment performed in the story. Incredible. Please support our sponsor, Penguin Random House Audio, by purchasing these and other incredible audiobooks at libro.fm slash thereadingbug or wherever audiobooks are sold. Thank you, Penguin Random House Audio, for your support. Reader, you're back. I'm so glad to see you again as we continue our adventure through the Rwandan rainforests on the continent of Africa. We're traveling with the reading bug and the spelling bee and our new friends, Dr. Mike from the Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Group, or MGVP. Welcome back, reader. And Patience, who's a local guide and mountain gorilla expert. Welcome, friends. Lauren, how are you feeling? I know that a brush with a stinging nettle plant can be scary and painful, but after the pain goes away, they're pretty harmless. Thanks, Dr. Mike. Your doc plant leaves really did the trick. My legs are still a little red, but I'm hardly feeling any pain at all. Reader, be really, really careful when you're stepping around here. The stinging nettles are no joke. They sting really badly. I'm glad you're feeling better, Lauren. And yes, that's very good advice. There are lots of dangers here in the rainforest, many of them much worse than the sting of a stinging nettle plant. Follow carefully behind me and Patience as we continue our search. Yes! Dr. Mike and Patience are the experts here, and we're just along for the adventure. Remember, reader, we're on the lookout for Nyange, one of the male gorillas from the Umabano gorilla family that we visited. Patience noticed that Nyange was missing from the family, and because gorillas have no natural enemies, we're all afraid that he may be injured, or worse. It is imperative, I-M-P-E-R-A-T-I-V-E, -E, that we find him before sundown. And don't forget, Charlie is missing too. Charlie is the silverback male gorilla that's the head of the Umubano family. We think he may be looking for Nyange too, don't we, Patience? Patience? Reader, where's Patience? She was here when I fell into the stinging nettle plant, but I don't see her anywhere now. Do you? Dr. Mike, where did she go? Dr. Mike, Lauren, Reader, come fast. I found Nyange. Reader, did you hear that? It's Patience. She's found in Yange. Let's go. Quickly, over here. Look. Where? Take those binoculars and look straight ahead, and you will see Yange just beyond those trees. Thank you, Patience. Reader, let's look through these binoculars and see if we can spot Yange together. Oh, no. Reader, look. Do you see him? It looks like Yange's leg is stuck. There's a thick rope wrapped around his ankle. Do you see it? It's tied to a large stake that's buried deep in the ground. Oh yes, I see him reading, Bug. It looks like it might be a snare. F-N-A-R-E. Which is a kind of trap. You're right, Spelling Bee. It does look like a trap. And that trap was probably set by a poacher. A poacher? Oh no! But Dr. Mike, I thought that mountain gorillas were a protected species that couldn't be hunted or trapped. It is true. The hunting and trapping mountain gorillas is against the law. But that doesn't mean that it never happens. Most likely the poacher set this snare to catch an antelope, but it has snagged our curious young Nyange instead. Oh no, that's terrible. Is he hurt? Mm, I'm looking at his leg through my binoculars now. Nyange doesn't seem to be hurt badly at the moment. And I think the good news is that he will probably be okay as long as we're able to release him from the snare and treat his ankle to ensure that it does not get infected. Of course, if his ankle does get infected, Nyange could lose his foot or even his life. Well, what are we waiting for? We shouldn't be looking at him through binoculars. Let's go get him out of there. Wait! Not so fast, little bug. Remember, mountain gorillas are much, much stronger than we are. And Inyange is really agitated because he's stuck in that trap. If we get closer and release him from the snare, he may attack us. We also need to make sure that Charlie isn't nearby. As big as Inyange is, Charlie is even bigger. And remember, he is the head of Inyange's family. If Charlie sees us near Inyange, he might also think that we're trying to hurt, not help him. No, we can't simply run up and set him free. We'll need a plan first. A plan? Okay, that sounds pretty smart, Dr. Mike. Reader, do you have any ideas? Hmm, 
Me neither. Reading bug, what's so funny? That wasn't me, Lauren. Reader, were you laughing? Everyone be quiet. Do you hear what I hear? Yeah, yeah, yes. I hear something, Dr. Mike. Sounds like a creepy laugh. Sort of, sort of like the laugh you might hear in a horror movie. Do you think that somebody else is up here with us? On this mountain? Spelling bee. Dr. Mike said that no one is allowed to hike here without a naturalist and a park ranger. So I don't think there's anyone else here. It might just be our imaginations working overtime. Probably not someone, but there's definitely something nearby. Shh. Dr. Mike, that sounds like... I know, patients. Let's all keep calm. Dr. Mike, what is it? It just keeps laughing. Or maybe it's... They. I think I can hear more than one now. Reader, can you think of anything that lives in the jungle and laughs like that? Well, lemurs live in the jungle, and they laugh like crazy. Unfortunately, those are not lemurs you are hearing. B, lemurs only live in Madagascar, and a couple of nearby islands, not up here in the mountains. I only know of one other laughing animal then, Reading Bug. A laughing... Hyena. But unlike cute little lemurs, hyenas are big and mean and vicious. Please tell me those aren't hyenas we're hearing, Dr. Mike. I'm afraid that's exactly what we're hearing, Lauren. But I thought hyenas lived on the flat African savannas where the lions, giraffes, and zebras live. Haven't you seen Lion King? They do live in the African savannas, but hyenas are very adaptable. They live in Asia and the Middle East, as well as in Africa. They can be found in grasslands, woodlands, savannas, forest, forest edges, subdeserts, and even mountains like this one, as high up as 13,000 feet. Oh no! What should we do, Dr. Mike? Reader, maybe we should run before the hyenas realize we're here. No! Don't run! Let's stay still here. Hyenas will instinctively chase anything that runs. If we shouldn't run... Should we maybe all get on the ground and play dead? No, don't lie down or pretend to be dead either. That might make the hyenas curious and they'll probably come to check you out. Hyenas are scavengers after all. Scavenger? S-C-A-V-E-N-G-E-R? Scavengers are animals that eat dead animals rather than or in addition to hunting live animals. Is that right, Dr. Mike? Correct, Spelling Bee. Scavenger sounds pretty sc- sc- scary. Don't show any fear. Hyenas hunt like animals and they often pick off the weakest or the most afraid. Hide my fear? How do you expect me to do that? I'm shaking in my shoes. I don't want to have to face hungry hyenas. Y- y- yeah, hyenas have big sharp teeth that they use to eat other animals. Shh, here comes one now, just ahead of us. Through the clearing, see? Oh, yes, I do see him. Do you, Reader? He's a really scary-looking animal, bigger than most dogs, with brown fur that's covered with dark spots. He has a dark, scary face and a long, thick neck. His front legs are longer than his back legs, and his large mouth is full of pointy teeth. And I think he may have heard us, because his big ears are sticking straight up on top of his head. You're right, Bee. And look, he's heading in our direction. Oh no, we're no match for that mean-looking hyena. Maybe Inyange can help us. We need a giant, strong gorilla to protect us. I don't think so. Inyange is stuck in the snare, remember? He's in no state to help us, and he's in danger, too. Yeah, hyenas don't normally attack gorillas, but they may decide that an injured gorilla who is unable to run away would make good prey. Well then... If Inyange isn't able to help, then we'll just have to help ourselves by acting like gorillas. Remember, gorillas don't have any predators or enemies here, and hyenas are afraid of a big, strong, healthy gorilla like Inyange. So, to scare off this hyena, why don't we all act like gorillas? That's a great idea, Reading Bug. I've never heard anyone try it, but it might just work. 
We're going to need to be very convincing, though. Hyenas are very smart animals. And if they don't believe that they've stumbled on a troop of big, healthy gorillas, I don't think they'll leave us alone. On my count, I want you all to puff your chests out, pretending to be huge, 500-pound gorillas, and bang the palms of your hands on your chest, like this. Dr. Mike... I thought gorillas banged their fists on their chests, like King Kong. Uh, That's a bit of a gorilla myth, actually, Lauren. Now, while you're banging, make a sound like this one as a warning, too. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, look! The hyena definitely heard that, Dr. Mike. Reader, reading bug, B, can you do what Dr. Mike is asking? Bang your hands on your chests and make a warning sound like Dr. Mike did. Okay. On my count, everyone together. One, two, three, now. Whoa! Whoa! Great work. Keep it up. Whoa! 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 Lauren, Reader, B. I don't think it's working. The hyena is leaving. Instead, he's getting closer. Dr. Mike, Reading Bug is right. It's not working. The hyena is still creeping towards us, and Inyange isn't moving at all. What are we going to do? Hey, look. Is that Charlie? That enormous gorilla with silver fur on its back, just at the edge of the clearing. Yes, I see. And he's reared up on his back legs and slapping his thighs in his chest. He looks very scary. That is Charlie. I can't believe it, but he's helping us. He's slapping his chest and yelling, just like we were. And I think it's working. As good as your gorilla impressions were, Lauren and Reader, I don't know if that hyena believed that we were a gorilla troop, but he definitely believes Charlie. Look! He is heading back to his cackle. We're saved. His cackle? Yes. That's what a group of hyenas is sometimes called. Amazing. I've never seen Charlie do anything like that before. That was a really close call. Thank you, Charlie. Hold on, everybody. Listen to me carefully. Let's not celebrate too soon. I think it's important that we all continue to be very quiet. I don't think the hyenas were the only animals that Charlie was trying to frighten. He's not sure he can trust us, either. But as long as we remain calm, I don't think he'll hurt us. He's trying to frighten us away from Inyange, too. Frighten? Well, he's succeeded. What do we do now, Dr. Mike? Don't make any sudden movements. I know Charlie, and I think I'll be able to calm him down. Patience and I both already know Charlie, and he knows we're friendly, so hopefully he'll relax once he sees us. On the other hand, he doesn't know any of you, so he may get confused and get even angrier. Reading Bug, Reader, Spelling Bee, did you hear that? We need to let Charlie know we're his friends, like Patience and Dr. Mike, and that we're here to help in Yange. Any ideas of how we can do that? Lauren, what about a song? Your songs have helped calm down other angry animals before. Great idea, Reading Bug. Let's give it a try. Cheer up, Charlie, there's nothing to fear When we say we're your friends, we're completely sincere We're here in Rwanda in order to see Your home where you roam so strong and so free We're here in the rainforest, high in the mist On mountains so tall that they have been kissed By the clouds that reach down from the sky above to embrace the steep mountain tops that they love mountain gorillas are mighty and strong and we're here to ensure that you will live long we promise to help keep your homes safe from destruction and protect your great family from disease and abduction so cheer up charlie there's nothing to fear when we say we're your friends we're completely sincere We're here in Rwanda in order to see Your home where you roam so strong and so free We know just like us you have families and friends You have children to protect and you watch over them 
They fight with their siblings, just like we do. And they play with their friends, which is just like us too. You are peaceful gorillas who laugh just like me. You take naps when you're tired and you like to climb trees. Like us, you have fingers, toes, elbows, and knees. And if you catch a cold, just like us, you will sneeze. So cheer up, Charlie, we're friends and not foes. We've got so much in common from our heads to our toes. Please stay calm, let my friends and me help you and your family roam wild and free. Your family will roam wild and free. Great work, everyone. Charlie is definitely calming down. All right, let me try talking to him now and see if we can get him to back away so we can take care of Inyange. Lauren, reader, patience, why don't you slowly crouch down, put your hands on your head, and make yourselves as small as possible so Charlie doesn't feel threatened or outnumbered. Just look down at the ground. Don't look at Charlie no matter what happens. Perfect. Why don't you also try whimpering softly like a little puppy does? Like this. Can you do that? Reader, can you whimper like a puppy just like Dr. Mike? I'll do it with you. Great! Excellent! Okay, now I'm going to stand up and speak to Charlie. It is very important that you stay calm and down on the ground while I'm speaking with him. Can you do that? Of course we can, Dr. Mike. Okay, here I go. <clears throat> Wham. <clears throat> Wham. Lauren, reader, B, what in the world is he doing? It sounds like he's burping. B-U-R-P-I-N-G. <clears throat> Wham. <clears throat> Wham. Do you hear that? Charlie's burping too. <laughs> That's right. And his belching back to me means that our crisis is averted. Charlie has calmed down and he's telling me that it's okay for us to be here and to help Inyange. Lauren, reader, patience, you can slowly get up now, but make sure you stay at least 20 feet away from Charlie and any other gorillas that we may encounter. They're still quite dangerous. That was amazing, Dr. Mike. What do you mean that Charlie is telling you it's okay for us to be here? Gorillas can't talk. You're right. The gorillas can talk like you and I do. But they can definitely communicate with each other. Diane Fossey reported that there were at least 17 identifiable gorilla vocalizations. And since then, we have identified about 15 more that gorillas make to communicate with each other. People have learned how to use the same sounds to communicate with them, just like I was doing. The sound that we just made was the most important one to learn. We use it every time we visit the gorillas, and it means, I'm a friend. I'm coming here to visit, and there's nothing for you to fear. When Charlie made the same sound, he was telling us that he heard us, and that there is nothing for us to fear either. Oh, wow! I had no idea that gorillas could talk. They must be really smart. Oh, they are. Gorillas have their own language, and some of them have even learned ours. Gorillas can't talk like we do because their vocal cords are different from ours. But some gorillas have learned American Sign Language, which is used by many deaf people to communicate. ASL is a language in which hand, arm, body, and facial gestures are used instead of spoken words. And there are many cases of gorillas learning to communicate with humans using sign language. Oh, yes! I read about that in Coco's Kin by Dr. Francine Patterson. Dr. Patterson taught the gorilla Coco how to use ASL to communicate with her and other humans. During her lifetime, Coco learned to understand and to express more than 2,000 words in ASL. Coco's Kitten is about the story of Coco and her kitten, which she named All Ball. It is a story in which Coco tells us about herself in her own ASL language, expressing her love, anger, sorrow, and joy. It's really amazing. That does sound amazing, Reading Bug. I'd love to hear more about Coco and her kitten. Maybe later, Lauren, but now we've still got a bit of a situation on our hands. Charlie is calmed, although he's still watching us closely. But Inyange is still trapped in the snare, and we've got to find a way to get him out before he really injures himself. Can 
anyone think of a way to help him escape? Reader, what do you think? How can we help Inyange escape his trap without getting too close to him? I might have an idea, Dr. Mike. You said that Inyange is frightened, right? And that he might attack us if we try to free him from the snare. Well, what if we tranquilized Inyange first? I read in Gorilla Doctors Saving Endangered Great Apes by Pamela Turner, the veterinarians at MGVP can tranquilize an injured gorilla so that they can check them out without getting hurt themselves. Do you have a tranquilizer? T-R-A-N-Q-U-I-L-I-Z-E. Tranquilize. That means giving medicine to Inyonge that will put him to sleep. Doesn't it? Correct, B. And great idea, Reading Bug. Gorilla Doctors is a non-fiction book that was written about us, the Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Project. It's a great book if you want to find out more about all the things we do here at the MGVP. If I can, I like to avoid tranquilizing the gorillas, but I don't think we have a choice with Inyange. I brought a tranquilizer with me just in case I need it. Here. I'll tranquilize him. Then, once he falls asleep, we'll remove the snare from his ankle, examine his foot to make sure that it doesn't need to be treated, and set him free to rejoin Charlie and the rest of his family. I can't believe I didn't think of that. If we're going to do this right, I'm going to need everyone's help. Can you help me? Dr. Mike, that sounds pretty dangerous. What if Inyange wakes up? Or what if Charlie charges us again? Reader, what do you think? Can we help? Lauren, Reader, Inyange needs us. You're right, Bug. We're his only hope. What do you think, Reader? We've already faced dangerous hyenas and an angry silverback mountain gorilla. Do you think we can handle a bit more danger on today's adventure? Okay, we'll help, of course. Dr. Mike, what do we do? I'll tranquilize Inyange, then Lauren, reader. I'll need you to clip a pulse oximeter to his lip to make sure that his heart and lungs continue to work okay. What's an oxi- oxi- oximeter? Oximeter. O-X-I-M-E-T-E-R. A pulse oximeter is a device that you use to monitor the amount of oxygen carried in the body. But why does Inyange need one, Dr. Mike? Inyange isn't used to the powerful medicine in a tranquilizer, so we just want to make sure that we haven't hurt him. The pulse oximeter will monitor for any signs he might be in distress. Are you ready? Here's the pulse oximeter. I'll aim this tranquilizer dart at Inyange's leg, and once it takes effect, I need you to run up to him and clip it to his lip. Ready? Ready! Ready! Yes, the dart hit him right in the thigh. And it didn't hurt too much or Inyange would have shrieked much louder. Nice work, Dr. Mike. But it doesn't look like it worked. Inyange is still awake. Look, he just pulled the dart out of his leg and threw it away. Just wait a few seconds, Lauren. Tranquilizers are really powerful. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look, Lauren. Inyange is starting to look pretty sleepy. He's blinking his eyes heavily over and over again. And look, he just toppled over on his back. Just like that, he's sound asleep. Listen, he's even snoring softly. His arms are up and over his head, and he's so still, he looks like a giant stuffed animal. (laughs) He sure does. Hurry, get that pulse oximeter onto his lip. Okay, Dr. Mike, follow me. Reader, let's go. Mission accomplished, Dr. Mike. Oh, but look at Charlie. He's still here and he's watching us very closely. And he's grunting, sort of like a pig. Gorillas make that sound to tell others to back off. I think that Charlie is still worried about what we're doing to Inyange, which means we'll need to work quickly. The good news is that Inyange is breathing comfortably and his heart rate is stable. Patience, can you help me remove the snare from Inyange's ankle? We need to carefully pinch the lock on the cable to release it, and then we can slip it off Inyange's leg. Great job. Okay, let's see what kind of damage we've got here. I think it's good news, folks. It doesn't look like the snare's damaged his leg at all. Charlie, he's going to be okay. Good as new. <clears throat> Wom. <clears throat> Wom. All I'll do now is give Inyange an injection of antibiotics 
to ensure that the small wound on his leg here does not get infected, and he should be healed up in no time at all. He'll wake up from his tranquilizer happy and pain-free and be able to return back to Charlie and the rest of his family. Wow, that was quick. I'm so happy that Inyange will be okay. We're not quite done yet, Lauren. We don't want any of our gorillas to be caught in a snare, and we certainly don't want to have to tranquilize them, but when it happens, we take advantage of the opportunity to take samples of the gorilla's blood, feces, skin, and hair. Oh, that sounds awful. What are you testing him for? Well, we test the blood to see if Inyange has any health problems, and we test his feces, or poop, to see if he has any parasites that could affect his health or indicate health problems in his family. Parasite. I know that word. P-A-R-A-S-I-T-E. That's an organism that lives in or on another host organism, like a flea or a barnacle. Very good, Spelling Bee. Gorillas are unfortunately susceptible to a number of parasites, including several malaria parasites and intestinal parasites. And the parasites are sometimes transmitted by humans to gorillas if they get too close to each other, which is why we take skin samples to test for parasites like ticks or mites that can damage a gorilla's health. We also do a DNA analysis of the gorilla's hair in order to better understand how Inyange is related to the other mountain gorillas in the park. Look, Dr. Mike, I think Inyange is starting to wake up. He seems to be moving around a bit, and it looks like the rest of Inyange's family has decided to join Charlie in watching over Inyange, too. Look, they're all coming out of the brush, and they're all watching us. Nice work, everyone. Because of you, Inyange was able to avoid any major injuries and will soon be rejoining his family to prepare his nest for the night. And just in the nick of time, too. It's starting to get dark, and we need to figure out where we plan to spend the night. Goodbye, Charlie. Goodbye, Inyange, and goodbye to the rest of your family, too. Inyange, try to keep close to your troop from now on so we don't need to do another one of these dangerous rescues anytime soon. It is pretty late in the day. Why don't we all spend the night and then head back down the mountain in the morning? We are so grateful to you, our new friends, for all your help. Tomorrow... I will take you to the Ibi Iwagu cultural village at the base of the mountain. The village, also known as the Gorilla Guardian Cultural Village, was founded by Edwin Sabuhoro, who is a real gorilla hero around here. That's right. In 2004, when wildlife was being lost to poaching, Sabuhoro disguised himself as a potential buyer for a baby gorilla. His mission was successful and the poachers were caught and put in prison. Even though the mission was successful, Sabahoro still felt terrible about putting the people in jail. So he visited the jail poachers and their families to apologize for tricking them and find out why they continued to poach the gorillas. And they told him of the starvation and desperation that they were facing. They told him that poaching was the only way that they could survive and feed their families. That's when Sabahoro decided to quit his job and come up with an idea to help the poachers make a living without trapping or killing endangered wildlife. He created the Global Guardian Cultural Village in 2006 to help support the native populations and to celebrate all of Rwanda's cultural traditions, people, and history. There, tourists can personally experience what life was like in a typical African village. The lifestyle, houses, dances, dressing, food, herbs, and organization you'll have an opportunity to try basket weaving and carpentry too. Many of the entertainers in the cultural village, like the Batwa or Pygmies, were once poachers, and the cultural village gives them an opportunity to do something that helps them earn a living without hurting the gorillas and other animals that live in the mountains. Oh, patience, Dr. Mike. The Gorilla Guardian's cultural village sounds amazing. We'd love to go there someday. But as you said, it's getting late. And we need to go home to our family and friends, don't we, Reader? Lucky for us, we don't have to hike down the mountain because we have the Reading Bug's magic book bag to quickly take us home. Magic book bag? That's right! Thank you so much for helping us visit the gorillas today. We'll be sure to draw pictures of everything we saw. And we'll spread the message about how we all need to help take care of the gorillas so that they will be there for future generations to visit and enjoy. Lauren... Reading Bug, Reader, thank you so much for your help today. 
Be sure to visit us again sometime, would you? You got it, Dr. Mike. Thank you. Yes, my first trip to the continent of Africa was incredible. Thanks to you and patience. I'm looking forward to visiting again. But now we've got to go. Quickly, everyone, into the book bag with me. One hop, two hops, three hops, and we're in. We've had a big adventure within our book bag, and I think we saved the day. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, book bag. Now it's time to fly away. Look. The mountains, trees, and rainforests all around us are disappearing, and the magic book bag is heading for home. Goodbye, Dr. Mike. Goodbye, Patience. Goodbye, Charlie and Nyange. We won't forget you or the incredible adventure we shared together today. I learned so much about the mountain gorillas of Rwanda. Thank you for including me on this amazing trip. Anytime, Spelling Bee. I'm so glad we were able to find and rescue Nyange today. Mountain gorillas are extremely endangered. Thankfully, there are amazing people like Dr. Mike and Patience, and amazing organizations like the Mountain Gorilla Veterinary Project all around the world, working hard to protect them and keep them from going extinct. That's right, Reading Bug. I think I'm going to draw pictures of Nyange and Charlie to share with my friends and family, so I can tell them all about the mountain gorillas we met on our adventure. And I'm going to draw a picture of our daring rescue. R e s c u e. When we freed Inyonge's leg from the snare. Great idea. What part of today's adventure will you draw, reader? If you enjoyed today's adventure like I did, and want to learn more about Rwanda or the mountain gorillas that live there, you can read any of the books in my book bag. I have a complete list for you at www.thereadingbug.com/adventures. We're back. You were such a great help on today's adventure, reader. Thank you. You bravely faced danger to rescue Inyange and send him back to his family, and proved to be an excellent veterinary assistant. When you're a reader, you're a leader. You're ready to learn about everything as you grow. You'll show this world that you can be anything. You could write a book or fly a plane, build a house with a giant crane. Whatever you do, one thing will be true. There's nothing you can't do. You can see it through just by being you. Cause you're a reader, you're a leader. You're ready to learn about everything as you grow. You'll show this world that you can be anything. You could sing your way into a Broadway show. Don't let anyone tell you no. Whatever you do, one thing will be true. There's nothing you can't do. You can make your dreams come true just by being you. What an incredible adventure! And how exciting to get to share it with friends like you! I can't wait to adventure with you again, reader. Me either. I'm really looking forward to our next adventure together. But for now. We'll play some coloring music for you to color to. I'd love to see what you draw today. If you can, please share it with me on social media or through thereadingbug.com. We'll see you again really soon. Thank you and goodbye. Bye. It's a reading bug adventure. There's lots of fun in store. Just inside our book bag, there's new places to explore. Grab your crayons and paper and your imaginations too. To share our trip with you. Today's episode of Reading Bug Adventures is sponsored by Scholastic and the False Prince series by Jennifer Nielsen. Shh, Lauren, keep it down over there. I'm reading. Oh, Reading Bug, I didn't see you. I'm in the middle of the fourth book of the False Prince series, The Captive Kingdom. It's really, really good. The fourth book? I didn't know there was a fourth book. I've already read *The False Prince*, *The Runaway King*, and *The Shadow Throne*, and they were filled with thrilling danger and deceit. And the exciting twists and turns had me racing through each book to the end. I know, I know. I can barely breathe right now. This fourth book is so exciting. From the moment I started the first book, *The False Prince*, I was hooked. The story follows an orphan named Sage who has been recruited to impersonate the king's long-lost son. It's filled with danger, deception, and deadly truths. 
The Wall Street Journal says, Sage proves to be a compelling character whose sharp mind and shrewd self-possession will make readers eager to follow him into a sequel. And I couldn't agree more. I'm thrilled to recommend this book series to all our podcast listeners. And you won't believe what happens in book four. What happens? Oh, you'll just have to wait and see for yourself. This book doesn't release until October. October? Oh, no. Well, in the meantime, be sure to check out the New York Times and USA Today best-selling False Prince series and catch up on the excitement before the Captive Kingdom releases this fall. The highly anticipated book arrives on shelves October 6th, 2020. You can purchase this series and other great books from Scholastic at thereadingbug.com or your local independent bookstore. And thanks to all our individual sponsors as well. If you're interested in becoming a patron, please visit our page at patreon.com. Thank you for listening to Reading Bug Adventures. I'm Lauren Savage, and today's adventure was an original story written by Diane and Brandon Savage. Original music was written and performed by me and my brother, Ross Gruet. This episode was performed by me, Chloe, Riley, and Brandon Savage, and by our special guest, Evelyn Kiomian. Evelyn was born on the Ivory Coast, a country in Western Africa, and is the founder of the Carrot School Project, a nonprofit organization that supports and provides a six-year education to children living in poverty on the Ivory Coast. Learn more at theksporg The Reading Bug is our family-owned, independent children's bookstore in California, and we're passionate about educating, entertaining, and engaging children of all ages. Learn more about us at thereadingbug.com and our personalized subscription box service at readingbugbox.com. Thank you.